There he is. Right here. Uh-huh. Right where I left you. Good flounder. Good flounder. That's definitely a flounder right here in front of me. <laughs> look at that. Would you just look at it? <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Captain Kai here. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, not on the sea hunt today. We're on the little uh, aluminum boat this morning. I'm having a few issues with the motor on my boat. So I'm going to try and get that taken care of next week. But until then, we're going to do some wade fishing on the little aluminum boat. Going back to my roots here. I used to do this all the time. Hopefully, y'all can hear me with the thousands of birds in the background. There's bait everywhere. Done caught a few fish early this morning before the sun came up. But y'all come join along with me and let's go catch some more fish. All right, y'all, so we are out of the boat now. I apologize if it's still a little dark right now. GoPro doesn't do too well with low light conditions, but we got the boat anchored up. Beautiful morning, little light breeze. Lots of slicks out here on this island that I'm fishing. And the reason that I'm fishing this spot is last week, I seen a lot of mullet and pogies in this area right here. And uh, that's usually a good indication that there's some kind of game fish, either speckled trout or reds in here. We're gonna be starting out throwing this Rapala skitter walk. You already know, I like that bone white with a red head or straight bone white early in the mornings. I'm gonna be throwing that on my Stratic 3500 CI4 Plus with a seven foot Shimano Terramar rod. And let's go ahead and quit talking and get this morning started. If we can uh, not get a bird to dive on my top water the first thing this morning. He's already after it right now. Yeah. That's the only bad thing about fishing an area with birds is if you're throwing top water, they're gonna dive after it, but most of the time they don't commit. You just have to pull it away from them. Ooh, there we go. First fish this morning, baby. He ain't big, but it don't matter. I think it's a little trout. He ain't putting up no fight. Yeah, little dink. Come here, buddy. Glad to see you. I really am. Got the skunk off the boat. Well, technically the island this morning. And one thing I did forget is pliers. So I'm gonna have to go back to the boat and get some pliers, but not a bad start to the morning right there. Definitely gotta get some pliers though before I get another hook in my finger. There you go. So I don't wade fish a whole lot. But when I do, you always want to start a little further away from where you actually want to fish and kind of work your way into it. That way you don't really spook the area a whole lot. Because wade fishing, it's a really stealthy approach to catching these fish. Whoa! As soon as it hit the water. <laughs> Another small one. But that was quick. I didn't even have time to work it and that fish was on. Yeah, mad at it. There we go, y'all. Trout number two, not a keeper. Well, I don't know, might be a keeper right there. We are gonna keep a few fish today, but not ones that are questionable. All right, bye. The one thing you definitely want to check on whenever you're wave fishing is check your boat. Make sure it ain't floating away because that would not be good. But it looks like it's holding. And that's what we got rolling up on us right there. That was literally not there 20 minutes ago. And it's coming this way. That's not good. So we're probably fixing to get wet. I 
All right, so we moved the boat a little closer to where we're fishing at. We're gonna start out with the white big slick with a green chartreuse tail. And hopefully that'll make a difference for us to get a bite. Just working along this bar here, throwing around the deep, deeper pockets. Ooh, that was a good hit. That was a good hit. Man. Smashed it right here, about 20 feet in front of me. Starting to get into the prime spot where I was wanting to get at early this morning. You can already see there's some bigger mullet jumping. That was the second bite so far. I swapped to the pink slick just so we can stand out in this dirtier water a little bit easier. That was a thump. Got him. About time. <laughs> Just had to get a little bit deeper water, I guess. That's all it was. Another nice little trout. This was on the pink big slick. Come on. I'm going to let you go. I promise. Oh, yeah. That would be a keeper trout for sure. For sure, beautiful fish. On that bright pink big slit, would y'all believe a fish would eat that right there? It's kind of hard to believe, but just really needs something that stands out in this muddier water. And I've just got this big slit rigged up with a four aught owner, eight ounce weighted hook. That really helps that lure get a little bit more action, sink a little bit faster in the water. Let's throw out in the same spot and just see if that was a one-time thing or if they're stacked up right there. And the way I'm working this is I'm just reeling it in fairly slow and just giving it two pops. So that lure is just gliding through the water just like this and whenever you pop it, it just kind of violently goes to the left or the right. Uh, of course, I missed the hook set on that one. <laughs> You got kind of slow there for a minute. I think this is a trout. Popped it right here, about 15 feet in front of me. Yeah, it's a trout. Steadily working into some deeper water. Oh, that's a flounder. Would you look at that? Y'all. <laughs> and I ain't even got a stringer with me. I'm gonna have to let that guy go, I guess. I ain't fixing to walk all the way back to the boat. Woo! You would get everything wet, wouldn't you? There we go. That's, that's probably about a 19 inch flounder right there. 18, 19 inches. Sure would love to have you. I might actually, you know what? I've got a net. We're gonna throw you in this net right here and maybe you'll stay because I sure would love to eat you. I really would. I think you will. What y'all think? Y'all think he's gonna chill out in that net right there? <laughs> probably not, but. We'll see. Yeah, we'll just slowly bounce this slick off the bottom. See if we can't pick us up another one. Usually it's not just one. I wouldn't imagine. Oh, there's a bite. He's on. Yep, another flounder. <laughs> Y'all were sitting on top of him right here. <laughs> We are sitting right on top of him right here. That's another decent one. He's probably, he's a little bit smaller. He sure is getting water everywhere though. <coughs> that was literally the next cast, y'all. Oh, here we go. See if we can stick him in there with his buddy. They ought to stay in there. Unless they don't like being on top of each other. Not bad. I will be completely fine if I don't catch another trout the rest of the day, but I can pick us up some more flounder. There's another flounder right there. He's on. Right there. I am literally on top of him. Oh yeah. Come to Papa. I'll release you right into this net. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look how pretty that is. On the bubblegum slick. That's what I call it anyways. Well, that flounder got away. 
Oh well. It's just so much fun feeling that thump fishing with these artificial lures. And nine times out of 10, whenever you feel that thump and you feel that weight and the pressure on the rod, you know it's a flounder. I usually give it about three, three and a half seconds, four seconds, depending on how it feels to me. And then I'll go ahead and set the hook. But just like that last one, I pretty much called it. I knew it was a flounder whenever you hit it. All right, so we have made it back to the boat. And you know what? I don't have two coolers. I've got a drink cooler and I've got two flounder. Y'all be mad at me if you want. So we got two flounder in the box. We're gonna regroup, get some new leader on. I think I got broke off because I had 15 pound monofilament leader on there because I was throwing that top water. So I wanted my line to float. And uh, I think I just let that flounder eat it too long. And when I set the hook, he broke it. So we're gonna throw some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader on there, bring us a couple more jigs. We'll see y'all when we get out there. So we are easing our way back over to this spot. One thing I noticed when I was walking back is uh, there was definitely a drop off right here in this area. And I was using that pole out there in the background as a uh, reference point. So we're just gonna kind of work our way back to where we were maybe not get right on top of them like I was before. Here comes the wind. Next is the rain. It looks like it's heading north. I think, I hope. <laughs> there he is, right here. Uh-huh. Right where I left you. Good flounder, good flounder. Oh yes. Oh, he's he straight up swallowed it. That's a good flounder, y'all. That might be a 20 incher right there. He absolutely inhaled that slick lure. Wow. I may have let him have it a little too long. Let's see. Oh yeah. He's not gonna make it anyways. Y'all check out that. That is definitely at least 19, if not 20. Y'all look at that. All the way down the throat. And teeth right there is probably exactly what cut me off earlier. Don't think flounder don't have sharp teeth. It's just so good to see these flounder coming back in numbers and in size too. I don't know if y'all remember, but around the BP oil spill, I believe it was 2011, it just really seemed like that messed the flounder population up, at least here along the Alabama Gulf Coast, as far as uh, numbers and size quality. And uh, here in the last two years, they have really made a good comeback. And uh, you know, obviously I don't keep everyone I catch. Y'all have seen me release flounder before, but you know, I feel like the population has made a great comeback and uh, it's totally legal here in Alabama to keep up to five flounder without a commercial license. Uh, they only have to be 14 inches long. And uh, I mean, they're just, they're great eating. So why not keep them whenever you catch a few? Another thing that I think has helped is uh, over there across the bay on the Eastern shore, they have a program over there where they have huge tanks and they'll grow these female flounder and uh, let them spawn and make hundreds and hundreds of flounder babies. And then whenever they get old enough to be able to release out in the wild, they release hundreds, if not thousands of uh, baby flounder out here in the bay. And uh, these fish grow fairly quick from what I've heard. I know people that do a lot of research in flounder fishing and, and study them and that's what they said. They grow really quick up until they get, you know, 15, 16 inches or so. Oh, right here in front of me. That's definitely a flounder right here in front of me. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely felt that thump. Yes, another beauty. Beautiful. Mmm, look at that. Would you just look at it? <laughs> That's four. All it needs one more, y'all. Heck yes. That's about a 19 inch fish right there, y'all. Just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, fish. I needed you. It's been a tough go for me here lately. So I've had a couple people comment, why don't I use live bait when I'm flounder fishing? So for a couple reasons, I mean, I do use live bait when uh, the opportunity shows itself, but I like throwing artificial mainly because you can cover more ground. You can cover more ground and also with this weedless style hook, I'm not getting caught up in all the, the rocks because this is a really oystery, shelly bottom where I'm at right now. And if I was using Carolina style rig or some sort like that with a finger mullet or bull minnow, I'd be getting hung up about every other cast. And I'm, I've only got hung up once with this lure and that was mainly my fault because I went to set the hook on a, a rock when I thought it was a flounder. Don't lie. Y'all know y'all have done that before. Set the hook on the biggest state record fish there is, but it's a log or a rock. <laughs> I ain't the only one. That is a beautiful looking stringer. And I'm very thankful for them. They're gonna eat really good. Well, I had a great time out here. I hope y'all enjoyed watching the video. To be honest, if we would not have caught that first flounder on pretty much accident while we was trout fishing, I don't think we would have caught any at all. I probably would have left and moved on somewhere else, but really honed in on that after we caught that one flounder, really slowed down the slick lure. And uh, I think I probably could have caught about seven or eight. I had about four or five that pulled the hook. I set the hook too early. Y'all please be sure to hit that thumbs up button for me so this video can spread for more people to see if you enjoyed it, if you learned something. And also if you're new to the channel, my name is Brandon and I fish all along the Alabama Gulf Coast. Obviously wade fishing, inshore, offshore, all kinds of saltwater fishing. But y'all stay safe. Y'all be sure to get a rod bent, line wet. We'll see you back out in the water next time. There he is. Is that my flatty patty? Let's give it a few seconds. Really? The hang up. <laughs> well, that ain't good. How did I get hung up on a weedless lure?